de ti, a la Emilia y con el proceso de ideas orgánicas con el director de Litoral, eh, Ana Cristina. Eh, Emilia me ha dicho a, o sea, proceso de los statistics. Um, so, she won a statistical in the, in the world that has no PhD. <laughs> uh, she has a first PhD in mathematics for French and then a second obtained in Argentina and then a, a second one in, in the United States in Washington. And uh, she works in, on partial risk squares, uh, regression models, in high dimensions. So uh, uh, she agreed to, to, to sit with me first so that I can talk to you in this process. So it's the report that I'm going to do a part is uh, about partial risk squares Thanks for the introduction. Uh, I remember that we used to do um, a congress that it was called ERPEM, and it used to be that the Argentinian were talking in Spanish and the, the Brazilian were talking in Portuguese. Uh, we didn't understand each other at all. Ah, for, uh, Portuguese people understand, uh, for, uh, people talking Portuguese could understand us, but we couldn't understand anything. I think, I don't know why it's one direction. And then one day Antonio Galvez said, okay, everybody has bad English, but at least we can understand that bad English. And he decided the Congress, whole Congress was going to be in English. What I'm saying is this is one, I mean, I, I spent part of my time in Minnesota, United States, but nevertheless, my English is not improving and it's not going to improve, but you can ask me questions. The idea about this is talking about um, matrices algorithms, partial least square, and numbers. Uh, I, I mean, when I was doing this, uh, and this is, is based on things that we were, I was, I'm working in partial least square since not a long time ago, but now it's like my life is about partial least square for a while, because we are, uh, we are uh, writing a book with uh, Dennis Cook. Dennis Cook is the one that is, uh, has the Cook distance. This is the same one. Uh, he was my advisor, and I worked with him since a long time ago, and uh, I don't know, he's 85, and he was much more than me, and uh, <laughs> than a lot of people together. Um, and I have the fortune to, to work with him. But the idea is um, the class should be that you understand the idea is not apply class, because I'm not doing apply statistics. But in some way, I want to connect this, uh, the algorithms with the, the theory of the statistics. And of course, I want you to ask me questions because I don't know if it's, uh, maybe it's too trivial, maybe it's too difficult, I don't know. It's a, it's a mix of things here. Um, the first thing is I want to thank the opportunity to come again to Sao Paulo that I, I enjoyed a lot the last time I was here for that RPM. I don't remember the, I think it was like 20 years ago or so. I'm from this city, Santa Fe, and if you see Santa Fe, um, Sao Paulo, or, do, or does Rio de Janeiro? But it was Sao Paulo. Sao Paulo is like a, it's very direct, but as Argentinians and from the interior part of Argentina, we have to go first to Buenos Aires and from Buenos Aires to come here. But since I'm uh, close, if you see, this is Buenos Aires, this is with the Paraná River, and I spend part of my time close to this. This is the, it's not the Paraná River. If you see here, there are Santa Fe. I don't know why they put Santa Fe here, but there is the Paraná River and there is the big river that is called Rio Salado. And this is, is what we see uh, in our, close to our city. Um, well, the book, this is the first part, uh, page of the book that is going to be, uh, in, I think in less than six months, it's going to be available. And the idea is partially square, in fact, is one of the, um, I mean, I was working since my uh, statistic thesis in something that is called dimension, uh, sufficient dimension reduction. Uh, I'm not going to talk about that, but it's, it's always, I'm, I'm going to say something in the middle of the class about why we went to the partial least square since we are coming from a different thing. I don't know, do you know partial least square? Do you have idea what is partial least square? Okay. 
um, principal, principal component, yeah, everyone has to agree, at least. I mean, I'll, oh, you have to say you know, because if you don't know uh, principal component, like, I mean, you are doing statistics and you don't know what is uh, principal component. But partial least square, you don't feel ashamed if you don't know partial least square, no? But principal component is something like now deep learning that you have to see something at least to talk, to understand what people are talking about, no? If this um, principal component is, li is like that. Um, well, this is the, I'm not going to show the index of the book, but to show that at least the book is in progress. It has an index now. It's almost done. And I want to remember the title of this class. It's talking, I mean, when I, when I was working in sufficient dimension reduction, I had to learn, I'm a mathematician from the, I mean, I studied mathematics first. Nevertheless, when I started working in, um, in sufficient dimension reduction and radiation, I realized I didn't know anything about matrices. In my classes, I never learned linear algebra in a way, I mean, I learned li linear algebra, but, I, but I, it, there were matrices, but we never really worked with matrices. And if you see now the classes, usually now, the classes in, ma in applied mathematics, they have linear algebra, and then they have a class that is called a numerical linear algebra, or, and really over there you see about matrices. The matrices are very important. Um, I remember I have a, since it was my second PhD, I have a friend from the math department that he was telling me that I did a PhD in linear algebra, in matrices, he's always saying that. And um, it's not completely true, but it's true that I have to be like, a, to become like a, an expert in matrices to be able to do my, my thesis. And this is what I'm going to, to mix here. The first, um, uh, the model that we are going to work here is the linear model, the basic one. It's like Linear regression is like is we are going to talk for how many more years about linear regression. But this is the first model, and sometimes you do very complicated model, and this is the one that works. But the framework of this uh, class is linear model. That I, um, this Y is going to be in R here. I mean, very basic. You can do things when Y is multivariate, but I mean, I want to, to show the ideas here. In, a, in one dimension. But the one that is in high dimension is X. X is in RP, okay? And P can be large. This is the problem about what we are going to talk about in this class is about what happens if P is very large. But this is, is and I like a lot to uh, always, and when I teach a class, to compare what is in the population and what is in the sample, no? Because sometimes, for example, partial least square is coming from a place where they never talk about population. It's always sample. And therefore, they never have X in RP. The matrix that they have is a matrix M by P. And they write models all, all in, in the sample. And here we have, like, we have more uh, three population parameters. No, it's beta zero, beta that is in RP, that I like to put beta transpose X because for me beta are vectors, are um, column vectors. And uh, of course there is another parameter that is the variance of the, this error. And here I assume that error, the error is independent of X. I mean, it's a linear model. I'm not asking about normality, but this is a linear model, that nothing new there. And the first thing that I want to put is, if you have this model, what is, are the population parameters? Uh, this is something that for sure, so sure. What is beta as a population parameter? What is the representation? Everybody knows that this beta is a sigma, sigma x inverse sigma xy. Or do we have to do the computation for this? I mean, how do you do this? Let's do quickly and then uh, maybe it's stupid. You have the model y is beta zero mass beta transpose x plus x. I'm going to assume that the expectation of x is zero. This is doesn't change anything, but we can do the same if the expectation of x and y, the, the marginal one, are not zero. And then you do the following. You put this as, I will do a trick. 
and this is um, a stupid trick, but the, it's one, the first thing that I learned. This is, this X. I always try to see the dimensions to see if I'm right. This is in R. This beta is P by one, therefore this is one by P, and this is P by one, therefore this is a number. This is a number, I can put it in the, in the opposite, okay? I didn't do anything, I chain, and this is again the same dimension. And what I do, I multiply by x, and I get x beta zero mass x x transpose beta plus x epsilon, okay? And now, I mean, I didn't do anything. I multiply by this by x. I take the expectation to both sides. And since I ask this expectation to be zero, when I take the expectation, this is the covariance between x and y. When I take the expectation, this is a, a, a constant. And the, yeah, the expectation of x is zero means this is, is zero. And here, this is a constant, a, a vector, but it's a constant. And the expectation of this, since the expectation of x is zero, is our sigma x, the covariance of x. And here, x and epsilon are independent. The expectation is the product. The expectation of epsilon is zero. Therefore, is zero. And from here, we say, OK, what is beta? I take the inverse. Then I want to say something. When you have a model and we have a population, we are always assuming that these things are um, has an inverse. Why this has an inverse? Because if this doesn't have an inverse, means that two x are the same or, a, or multiple of the other. And in the population, it's because you made a mistake. And uh, you put again the same uh, a random variable. And then we can assume that the inverse always exists. From here, you get beta. And beta zero, you get from. Okay, once you have beta, you can get what is beta zero, no? But well, this is, is the first thing that we all know, but I like to write in the population, because then what do we do in the sample? In the sample, what do we do? Well, we can do maximum, uh, maximum likelihood estimator, we can do a least square estimator, any of them, what do we get? For beta, beta hat is going to be, okay, the inverse, of this and this one. Um, the sample, I mean, this is, I call plugin uh, in general when you put the hat in the population where the hat are the usual one. This usual one is you do the covariance of my data set and this is the covariance between X and Y. And here you have the first problem, no? What is the first problem that you have here in the sample? I'm saying, in the population, yeah, I repeat this because, it, I mean, everything I repeat is because it costs me a lot, of, a lot, no, to understand. In the sample, we are, we agree, I hope, that this inverse always exists. Because in other case, you are having a model where you repeat things, no? But you don't have the, the sample. Once you have the sample, what is the problem with this? No problem. The hat is not invertible, but why is not invertible? No, no, ah, for, uh, this is what I understand. If this is doesn't have an inverse, I don't know what to do, okay? First. <laughs> another class, another, another professor. No, the thing is the following. You have, this is your model. Your model means you have variables. The variables are not one multiplication of the other or, I mean, or, or co a linear combination of the other. But now, I have um, I have a sample, no? I have any data, any data set. I have xi, I mean, this xi belongs to R -M, RP, and I have n of them, okay? And then I, I made the construction of x 
how do I do sin my x? Is 1 over n minus 1 or 1 over n, whatever. Sum, and here you add this minus x bar, x bar, uh, where x bar is again in Rp, no? It's in each coordinate you do the sample. And here xi minus x bar transpose, okay? This is, is, I like to do this. This is p by 1, and this is 1 by p, okay? Therefore, this is a matrix, p by p. This is the contribution that has one data set in my covariance matrix. Since this is p by 1 and 1 by p, this matrix has rank 1. Okay, this has rank 1. This matrix doesn't have an inverse because it, ha it has rank 1, okay? And then I start adding, adding n of them. When I add n of them, this one has rank what is the rank of this matrix? Well, if the original one, the data set, sigma s has an inverse, this is has rank. Minimum between what? Well, you say you are adding p, you are adding n of dimension of rank 1. What is going to be the rank? Well, you say I'm adding and adding, probably it's rank n. No, it's not rank M because you have this X bar that is mixing things and makes things more uh, um, dependent, and then it has rank one, N minus 1. Okay, we are agree with that. Rank N minus 1. Suppose you believe me, you can say rank N, it doesn't matter. The problem is this is a matrix of the, uh, P by P. If you are adding, and uh, adding n of them, the rank is n minus 1, and it's going to be, okay, you are going in one moment, you say the rank n minus 1. But if you are adding more than p, this matrix cannot have rank greater than p. Why? Because it's a matrix by p by p, the maximum rank that you can have is p. Therefore, it has to be the minimum between these two. But this is a matrix p by p. It's going to have an inverse. If and only, and this is with probability 1, if this has an inverse. With probability 1, if you didn't make any mistake of adding rows from the other because you made a mistake when you put the data and you add this, then this is, is going to be has inverse if and only if p is less than n minus 1. And this is the problem, because if p is greater than n minus 1, this is doesn't have an inverse. And you are coming here and say, OK, it doesn't have an inverse, but and the maximum likelihood estimator doesn't exist, but the least square estimator exists. You can put here, and but this is another class, you any generalized inverse. Any generalized inverse makes this problem it's a minimum, it's a least square, it's not a least square estimator, but minimize the norm between the data and my um, x. Okay. The least square means this. You put the data, now my data, you put x as a matrix where you put here my first data set, my n data set, this is n by p, okay? Because you put Mm, here I put transpose because for me the vectors are columns. I put first and n, and then least square says take this one, take x, here it's n by 1, this is n by p, multiply by beta and find the beta that min minimizes this. When you put this here and if n if p is less or equal than n minus 1, the solution is the one that I told you. Sigma x1. If p is greater than n minus 1, there is infinite number of solutions. There are infinite number of solutions, but the, the one that has a um, smallest um, length is the one where you put here the, uh, the pen rows generalizing. And the average results there, if this happen or happen or happen, this is a good estimator of beta. 
but we are not going to talk about this here because the conditions are very strong and there are not too much. Look at this. This is a very easy problem and there is no solution. There is no uh, theory. Uh, and people are talking about, I mean, not, I didn't want to talk about this, but I will tell you something. Taking the generalized inverse, it seems to be a good solution. And people are still trying to understand why this is, is a good solution for the uh, estimator of beta to do prediction later on. Why people is interested now in talking about this problem? Because they want to understand in deep learning and uh, yeah, in deep learning why a lot of time n is smaller than p and still are working the estimator, you know? And apparently they cannot answer the question. And then the first question they have to answer is what happened in linear variation when this is working, okay? But there is a, a problem even here. There are not too much progress in the linear regression. What to do when n is less than p and you want to predict a new data set? But because this is, you can do all the computations. But to, to see what happened in the new, uh, in the new data point, for example, you should know what is the expectation of these metrics to say something. And the expectation of the metrics when the inverse doesn't exist in the perm rows is not available. Even under normality. This is a very easy problem to state. You have a covariance matrix, okay? You have a covariance matrix. N is less than P, you do the perm rows inverse. You have that. It's an object that is very easy to describe. You can compute. And I tell you, the data is normal. What is the expectation of that? It's not known. In the only case that is known is when this sigma x is identity. The case that is left is only diagonal, because once it's not diagonal, you can do um, decomposition. But it, even for diagonal, it's not known what is expectation. And then you see why there are no progress in this area. OK. I don't know if it was more or less clear. This was not part of the class, but I think it's an interesting problem. Uh, did I answer your question? Yes. <laughs> Don't ask me questions because I go to the different things. <laughs> but this is a nice problem. Eh? I try to think a lot about this problem, and it's, ve it's a very hard problem. But it's very easy to say. And I think the people uh, who know more about mathematics and algebra people, because they have a it has to be with eigenvalue, eigenvector, maybe you can solve that problem. And it's going to be a paper that everybody is going to cite. Okay. Then what people do in this case, okay, let's go back to our problem, but this is, I wanted to say something about that part. The, the one that is very well known is, okay, if you have a lot of, uh, if your N is small and your P is big, what people is using? People use, Principal component, okay? Principal component, regression, uh, is something that is very used. And I will say, even if there are no uh, statistic foundation, it works a lot of time. Um, I want to show you a video. It's a very short video, and it's fun. About, uh, uh, this is not mine, eh, this video. Let me see if I can see the video. I can, I don't know if it, it can you see here? Oh, yeah. Ah, there is no sound. I don't know why. Okay, this is, I want to take a picture of this uh, teapot and I want to see what is the best picture that I can take, the best picture I can take, okay? And it says, okay, this is good, no? This is bad, this is bad, and this seems to be bad, okay? We agree with that. This is, seems to be bad. If I want to take the best picture, it's that one. And if you do principal component, Oh, 
principal component rotating and see what is the longest axis, no? This is what is doing principal component. It looks the, and it's taking the picture in this, um, it rotates, and it's taking the, the best picture. You realize that the, be the longest one, because this is shorter, is the other one. I mean, these are the two, if you take two pictures. Okay, this is what is doing principal component. Let's see in our, mm, oh yeah. what principal component is doing? What principal component, again, in general, when you take on a principal component, it's talking in the sample, okay? But I'm going to see, for me, the population is the first, because it's what I understand, this is the, the thing. The thing that they do is, I have my, P, uh, uh, my vector predictor, and uh, I will take, instead of this P, Q linear combinations of this, of that. If Q is one, I replace X by the variable, the linear combination. If there are two, two linear combination. Once I do that, I study the relation of Y as a function of this linear combination. And then, if I take, if here I have x is very big, I replace x in the population, we can write ah, um, one thing. How does PCR choose this linear combination? It, there is a, a foundation why it takes this, but it says, okay, you take the covariance of x, this is the sigma x, sometimes I call covariance of x, sometimes sigma x. We find the first q again vectors of the covariance of x, I says Q by the two K, uh, K is Q, and then I consider this matrix. Look at this. This is P by one. This is our Q. Therefore, this Q by P. And I take now is this is our my linear combination, and I do the regression of Y on this linear combination. This means in the uh, the model behind that is the, the following. I consider. I consider, I will change the, uh, I will change the notation. Here I take, instead of x, I take this, that now is q by one, q by, uh, this is q by one instead, this was p by one, this is, is uh, q by p, I take v is going to be v1, bq, the first q, Again, vectors of the matrix sigma x. And then what I do, I mean, I'm talking in the population. What is the next step? When I have this linear combination, my beta tilde is going to be, well, as before, now the relation is y in this. Therefore, is the covariance of this, of the new predictors, times the covariance between the new predictors and y. Okay, and I want to spend some time writing this because in PLS everything is going to be always the same. But this is clear. If I convince you that the regression of y on the predictor is the covariance of my predictors times the covariance between my predictors and y, this is the definition. Now, let me take this one. What is the covariance between this one? I will do here the computation. This covariance, how do you compute this covariance? Well, it's V transpose, the covariance of X times V, okay? We know this, linear combination. Everybody is with me here. Okay, and what is the covariance between beta transpose X and Y? Again, it's beta transpose, the, co the original covariance. I will write that one, beta tilde, and beta tilde is going to be this covariance inverse, and the covariance. And now, I don't have to do the inverse of this covariance. I have to do the inverse of this matrix. This matrix was P by P, and now this matrix is Q by Q. It's as small as I want. Why? Because I take two linear combinations, this is the matrix two by two. Okay, 
And, the same, and now, let's go to the original one. This is my beta. Let me tell about the original one. The beta is what? The beta is B times beta tilde. Means B, B transpose sigma X, B, B transpose sigma X. The only change, beta, let's see, uh, the only thing that I change is instead of the inverse, I put this thing. We are going to see more about this. What is the meaning of this? But it's B, B transpose sigma X, B inverse, B transpose sigma X1. How do we do in the uh, in the sample? In the sample, I take my data, I compute the covariance sample, I take the first uh, few eigenvectors, and I compute my B in this way, where this is the sample and this is the sample. And the problem about uh, and how many linear combination in in, the, in this class, I will talk only about uh, cross validation in the sense that. You have a model, you are trying to take the queue that minimize the, uh, the error doing um, cross validation, something like that. I mean, you can do more things, but usually people take uh, cross validation. The advantage are the following. Well, this is every time that you look in Google, there are more and more, but they are like uh, simple linear regression are, of course, two millions of search. But if you take a um, principal component regression, it's a lot too. And the other thing is, and I think this is no less, the linear combinations are those that minimize, maximize the variability. Why I'm taking the first few uh, eigenvectors of the covariance metric? Because that eigenvectors are where is the maximum variability, as I show you in the teapot, okay? I mean, I'm saying, I have to talk y as a function of x, okay? I have too much information, in which uh, this is always for me ridiculous. I have too much information, I have to throw away information, no? This is idea. Okay, well, I will take only the, the, the part of x that has the most variability about x. I'm talking about x only, okay? Yeah, th this is important, and we don't need a model of y given x before doing that. Now, I suppose, now I have only two linear combination, I can go and do a picture about y as a function of those, okay? Uh, okay, minimize the variance of the estimator. But the error in general in regression is the variance, that is, you manage very well the variance to the principal component plus the bias. Remember, the variance is connected with the va variability of x, but the bias is the connection between x and y. And the principal component, this principal component that I take, I, I said, I, go, I get my predictors and I do the first, um, the first second vector. I never look why to say that. Why is not there in the picture? And therefore, there is no way that I can control the bias in this way. And since I want to make my point, I will show you an example. Suppose I have two data sets that they are very, very, uh, uh, x1 and x2, that they are very correlated. Of course, we, know we don't use this uh, principal component if I have only two dimensions, but I want to show my point, no? This is x1 and x2. I want to show you they are very correlated. The covariance is one R, R1, okay? And I say, okay, I don't want to use the two variables. I will use only one, okay? And I said, okay, uh, this is a picture of y, X1 versus X2, and here is a picture of Y versus X1 and Y versus X2, and I don't see too much, no? This is the plot that everybody tells us to do, uh, that I don't know how to that it says, okay, look at this. I don't see anything, no? I don't see anything. And I say, okay, let's do and use the first uh, PC. But let me compute my X here I have in the population. X uh, is normal with this mean and this variance. Somebody could tell me, this is the covariance. We are doing the population, okay? 
then but this is it's computing the sample. This is the matrix. What are the eigenvectors and eigenvalues of this matrix? Okay, we are not going to compute, but the first one is one plus r, and the first eigenvector is this one. Ah, well, divide the square root of two, but let me do no normal. And the second one is this, one minus one, okay? Believe me, you can do it later. <laughs> it's that. Okay, every time I compute it. Ah, no, I think it's over two, this. No, it's this one. It has to two. <laughs> it has to add two, no, because they, they help me. Okay, if I look, and R is very close to one, this is... All the variability are in the first eigenvector, no? Because if R is close to one, this is almost disappear in some way. Therefore, if I replace X by, I have to replace X by this one, okay? X is tell me, principal components tell me, take X and replace by the first one. Meaning, instead of taking the two variables, I have to choose the sum of the two. Okay, I will do that in the population, in the sample, and this is what I see. Y versus the first principal component doesn't say anything. But if I do, fíjense, uh, look, sorry, <laughs> look at this. The second one is to replace X by 1 minus 1 X, X1 minus X2. And if I replace x by the second one, then look at the variability. It's almost zero, the variability, for, because the variability is here. It's almost perfect, y versus the second principal component. Well, it's to make my point. Uh, the thing is, and uh, here is 95% of variability is in the first one and 5% in the second. But in this example, my y that I simulate was x1 minus x2 plus epsilon. Therefore, since I don't know the model, if I do this, I threw away uh, the last few principal component, maybe it doesn't have too much information about x, but it has the information that y needs about x. That this is about a sufficient dimension reduction. That we are always trying to look for um, information in x the best information I have in X about Y. Uh, this is an example, of course, a toys example, but this is an example that a, a friend of mine that worked in finance gave me because they work a lot in these type of things the, because they want to make, uh, make money, no? The price of the, of the petroleum in America versus uh, the price in uh, Europe. And apparently, they can make a lot of money about this difference. And therefore, for example, there, they, can, they need this. Of course, they don't use this, but I'm saying it's an example that it can happen. Nevertheless, I have, uh, in, the, in, the tip, in, the, in the teapot, this was the first picture, but what happened if I wanted to see only the, um, the top, how do you call this, the, la, la tapa? The, the, what, the cover. If I wanted to see all the cover, I took this picture and you couldn't see anything about what I wanted to see that is this one. Okay, I convince you not to use principal this component. No, this is the position for the principal component. But suppose that, okay, this is what the position because I didn't give you a problem. I say, take the best picture. But suppose that I didn't tell you, take the best picture because I want to see very careful, careful what is the cover. From here, you cannot see the cover very well. The best picture in that case was this one, that we say that is no good for principal component. Principal component was not going to take this picture, was going to take the other. But for my why in that case was, I want to see the, in Portuguese, <laughs> La tampa. This is one way. Why? Exactly. I should know. But it's okay. okay. This is it. <laughs> okay. This is the situation that if I, if you give me information, take the best picture. 
I was going to take this picture, but if I, if I give you a something more, the why, my why was I want to see how is the cover, how is the top of my teapot. This was the picture that I didn't, I was not going to take with the first um, question that you asked me, no? It was the first thing, the order that you asked me, okay? Is this clear? Nevertheless, please see, please let me put it work a lot of time, eh? Okay. Bueno, well, the scene is, uh, they are like uh, what to do in this part, no? The positive part is they are, uh, they are something that is positive that I want to emphasize for the rest of the class, that they are calculated before mode modeling, and uh, if they work, they are great. Really, they are great when they work. It usually work when they, in one moment I was trying to see paper where it worked, and in general is why, when the eggs are very correlated, and they are positive correlated with y, all of them. In the example that I gave you, y equal x1 minus x2, x2 is not positive correlated with y, and this is the problem. Uh, the other thing that there is a book that surely fair about principal component, he's a statistician, and he said, okay, you can see which are the more correlated with y, and instead of using the first few, use the one that are more correlated. Again, in this problem, you have the same problem. But okay, another solution is partial least square. We will start with this. I'm not going to say what is partial least square, but the first projection, if I do the first projection of partial least square, that as you see, is going to be the same idea, but B is going to be different. This is the only thing. I will compute B looking at Y. Here I, I compute B without looking at Y. Here I will compute B looking at Y. I will say how. And if I do the principal, the first one, it gives me the right answer. Of course, this example is prepared for this, but. Okay, this is, I, this is very, um, I enjoy a lot doing uh, uh, this, this part of the work. Some of the things that I, want, I will tell you is a uh, work in collaboration with uh, Cook that I really enjoy because it was like a transliteration. This is the idea. We all in the 50 had this problem of regression with many predictors. In, this is chem chemometrics. In chemometrics, they have the x are curves, okay? Therefore, if I decrease the size, the, a, the x, p is large. And the problem is that they realize if, okay, what, what can you do? You can discrete size in, okay, uh, put less p, no? Instead of doing like a lot of discretization, 100, you took 10 in the middle. But they didn't have, a, and then, okay, now we have p equal 10, I will consider my problem, and that's it. But they were losing information with that. The other thing is, you could do, for sure, you know the name lasso, and if you know, don't know what it is, you have to look because everybody talks about lasso, and this is, I have this idea, if everybody's talking about something, you have to look to see just to understand the conversation. Lasso says, okay, you have P, but Lasso says, you have P predictors, but no, but not all of them are going to give you information about why, only few of them, okay? And then you ask a model where you threw away information. But let me convince you about something. You have a curve, okay? You have P predictor because you make a discretization. You do a thinner or a discretization. You take all the P and you say, okay, only P of them are going to make contribution about what? This is very awkward, no? Because you say, okay, you have a curve, they are very correlated, and you say number one, three, and seven are giving you information about why, and the rest are not going to give you information about why. It's very strange that, no? Because you have the whole curve, it seems that if few of them are giving information, at least the one in between are giving information, no? And this is what Wall realized about that. Wall, uh, Wall uh, in the 50, he was no statistician, and he realized that this is, was no a good idea because it cannot happen that the curve, I, I mean, if you see the curve and this part give you information and this part doesn't give you information, you believe that. But let's say, this one, this one, this one give me information, but the one in between, no, doesn't give me information. It seems to be strange, at least. 
It's not something that I want to convince you. Wall in the 50 was saying that. He was saying, no, um, this is cannot happen. And then he invented an algorithm. And uh, I will show you the algorithm, but in a very, after a mathematician took, uh, I mean, he raised a lot of things and make it more, I mean, I can read. Maybe for the people in chemometry, they couldn't read. They was doing, you do this, 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 and you get then the prediction. They were interested only in prediction. They never were interested in say what is better. They wanted to predict. This was the goal. Of course, in the middle, you have to get the beta, no? But they, were not, they didn't care about beta. They care about um, prediction for a new value. And really, it's a very fascinating, I like this. He invented an algorithm, and he didn't take the algorithm for any, from any place. And uh, it was working for the geometric people a lot. It was, it was working. I want to tell something that I will tell you tomorrow, just to convince you to come, that this is a very interesting history that the statistician didn't pay attention to this at all, partially square, at all, because it was an algorithm. And you know that if we are a statistician, and I have the same scene, it's like, uh, this is an algorithm. I mean, what is the, we always want a model behind, okay? And then, I don't know when I'm going to say this, but tomorrow, um, there were people working, very good statistician working, where they found a model behind what he was doing, okay? And this is a very, but it took a lot of time because this is from the 50, and the first people that give a model is from the uh, 2013, yesterday more or less, what, 10 years ago, but I mean, it's almost yesterday. And I will show you the story where a lot of people in statistics were saying this is crap because it's not, what we say in statistics, we want methods that they are consistent, okay? If it's not, it's a method is not consistent, why do we want the method, huh? But this is what was, uh, I will tell you a little bit the story, but in the middle I will tell the, the mathematics we had. But for them they were worked pretty well and they didn't care about statistician. Okay, you don't like, you don't like. How do they compute the, the cross value, the Q? I don't remember how they did, but you can do via cross validation again. I mean, you have to find how many components, you do the same. I, I will show you some of this. Okay, this is a, a very clean version of one of the algorithms. I want, no, I'm we're not going through the algorithm a lot, but I want to show you a little bit how was the algorithm. This is a very clean uh, version, and it has a lot of name that still, I have to learn what is meaning this or this or weights or whatever, because it depends on the person how they, they talk. They say the following. This one is called Nepal's and it's uh, in the sample version, okay? Nepal says the following. You take the, these are matrices, no? N by P, now we have a matrix. These people were talking about sample, okay? They were giving what to do, the recipe in the sample, no? Of course, they, they didn't care, it was working, I mean. The first one is X1, is X, the matrix N by P, where I have all the, my data set. And Y was, M by Q, I mean, and this class I was going to talk only about response, univariate response. But they did this algorithm is for multivariate too. But let's not make it. And then it says, okay, compute, this is the sample covariance. Now in my notes it's called S of SX, that it was called hat sigma X before, okay? This it says, Q has to be the minimum between these two things, of course, because in other case, uh, we have again the same problem. And it says, okay, take the data and take the covariance between X and Y. This is the sample covariance, because the X1 is X and the Y1 is 1. Then take the first taken value of this matrix. Of course, the, uh, this matrix is P by P, but has rank one in our case because the covariance, uh, the y is in one dimension. Um, if we have a one dimension directly, the eigenvector of this matrix, 
Okay, let me convince you about something. If I have a matrix that is rank one, I have H, H transpose, this is P by one, and this is one by P, because we have Y in R. The agent vector, the agent values of this matrix, this has rank one, okay? Therefore, all the eigen values are zero except one, okay? And the one that is not zero, the first eigen value that is not zero, eigen vector, is a constant time h. Okay, since has rank one, meaning all eigen values are zero except one. This is we believe, no? And that this is eigen vector is because when you do h, h transpose h to c. Now you look, this is a number, because this is 1 by p, p by 1, and therefore this is h, h transpose h, and therefore, you see like this, h is a, this matrix times h is h times a number, therefore h is an eigenvalue, with this eigenvalue. And because in my notes, uh, it's in general, and therefore you have to take the first eigenvector, but it, it says, okay, the first one, the first one at all, is the covariance, let me put like this, the covariance between x and y. Now they do, uh, okay, this is the first second vector. Then they compute something, something, something. It doesn't matter. What they do is in some way they deflect in the sense that at my x, I take away this part. What I want to say about this, and in principal component, you can say the same. To my x, how do you compute the second eigenvector? The second eigenvector of a matrix, you can say, you have x x transpose. The second eigenvector is, I take away this matrix. This is not the same bit. I take the first eigenvector of this matrix. I compute this. Now it's normalized. And I take the first eigenvector of this matrix. The, the first eigenvector of this deflection is the second one of this. Okay? It is the same the idea. When you do principal component, you can do first, second, third, or you can do first, first of this, first of the other. Okay? You can take away the. And here you do the same. And for y, and I compute the second eigenvector of this matrix. Okay, I do like an algorithm. And then you take all this W that you compute in a different way because my deflection is, def is different because now my deflection takes into account that I have a Y. In this weird way, but you take it into account that you compute all UW, and at the end, look at the, the, how is the beta. The beta is exactly the same as in principal component, in the sense that what you do is you replace x by linear combination that you saw in a different way, and again you use your beta. We will say more about the w, but I want to see that it's more or less the same idea the principal component. The only difference is how you make the deflection of the matrix, how you compute the eigenvector, okay? And always, this is interesting, the first direction in principal in Prasia least square is this one. It doesn't matter which one you use uh, of this algorithm, you always do the same. Well, the other very well known, any question here? I mean, I don't want, I want you to, this is, they can ha have these uh, notes. Right. So, yeah. um, okay, there are a lot of property, etc. But any idea, we didn't say too much. I wanted to give you the idea. Then it came another person said, no, I have a better algorithm. Okay? My algorithm is, you take the covariance, look at this, it's much more simple. You take the covariance, you take the first second value again, the same. Then, uh, you do the deflection. The deflection is taking, this is, is the, we are going to talk about this, but this is the orthogonal uh, projection in the one before, and it's doing all the, the, the weights 
and they do at the end the same. This is much simpler because what they do is to take one, I take the one, and now I will take the second one is this one, but I take away the part that is, I don't, I don't need any more about this, and so on. And there was a lot of discussion about which one is best, et cetera, et cetera. And then when Y is in one dimension, the beta is the same. The weights are different, the V1, V2, the one that I'm using are different. The V1 is the same for simple and for um, Nepal, are exactly the same. But the second one is different. But at the end, when you do the beta, you get the same answer for beta. For if you have Y in one dimension, in one dimension. And then there was a big discussion which one was better in higher, I mean, if you have more than one. I, I didn't read there hundreds of papers about this thing. Well, Nepal falls first, and this is, is a very clean, I will tell you. <laughs> you can have to see the paper. No, it was much later because this was this difficult to program, et cetera, et cetera, no? And then it came later this, but the papers were like, now we get an algorithm that it works. I mean, I think this was much easier to program in some way. Well, and then there was Hillan. Hillan is an statistician and he made progress about this. And he connected, but he didn't make the full connection, but he connected with something that is called Krilov, um, it's called Krilov uh, space, that is very well known, Krilov space, is very well known in numerical analysis. If someone is working in numerical analysis, this is pretty well. He said, okay, let's do the following. Let's consider this is going to be my basis. My basis is going to be, I take the covariance in the sample, no? In the sample. I take the covariance. This is my first vector, as everybody. The second vector is going to be, figure, look at this. This is, is P by 1, and this is P by 1. Why? Because you have P by P, P by 1 is another vector. Okay, take another one until this is, is now is P by Q and this is are my um, this is are my uh, weights, okay? And Helen computer game the same. Uh, None of them they were giving like a stopping criteria. The stopping criteria, I don't know exactly how it was in the literature. Now we can say, okay, I take a cross validation and that's it. But why, why this is was Helen, and then he realized again that this is was for one thing only when Y is in R, okay? Because if Y is not in R, here I start having problems. We are not going to talk about that. But why this is, was a, a big, a, an important step to give this algorithm? I think this was for me, it, this paper, Helen was working in a, um, in a statistic in, I don't remember, Sweden maybe. And he was working with other people in geometric, etc. But I think this was in the 73, and I think this is a big step. Why is a big step, do you think? This was always in the population, in the sample, no? They were talking about sample. But why this is a big step for a statistician, at least, not for them. For them, it was okay. another algorithm. And this has a problem. This algorithm has a lot of problems. Why? Because look at this. When you are adding, I'm not going to show this here, but when you are adding this, if you put more than you need, the matrix has a... Um, the problem with this matrix that has a, num a condition number, huge condition number. It's horrible, this matrix, okay? To compute using Krilov is one of the worst algorithms to compute the, uh, the, the sample. But for us as statistician, I think this is great, this one. Why? Why do you think it's great that, the, that he did a big improvement in the, in the method? Well, 
I will say maybe because I'm very distortion. For me, it's because this is very easy to see that what he was doing in the to translate this in the population. In order to have a model, we need something in the population. To have that in the population, all these algorithms that I will show you the population version are very difficult to see. Here you say, ah, he's he's using look at the principal component. I told you we are the first again vector of the of the a covariance metric, the population one. Here I can tell you, ah, what he's doing is taking these metrics in the population. I'm not making what is the model, because it was in 2013 that him with Cook and another, uh, um, and Sue realized about the model behind. But this is a big progress, because you say, OK, what you are talking is this one. This is your. This is your B. And I think for us, this is a big product because, I mean, for us, for a tradition, and my, I don't know if it's a big progress, but for me, it's telling you, okay, this is, is a, you are doing this in the population, you are taking this, and this is a plugin estimator of this. Okay. Now, let me talk more about to arrive to a model. Um, I show you in the, okay, it doesn't matter. I show you in the sample, the Nepal's version and the simple version. Then, ah, and I want to say, okay, and then the first thing, one of the things that we did is how do we write the, um, the we wanted to put all together to see if all of them give the same model of the, because, because here you can say, once you have this, uh, the, the Helen one here, this is all hat. If you put instead of hat, you put all population parameters, what you can say very easily, okay, you have uh, the beta, the Helen, okay? And here I can do the beta Helen in the population. And if P speaks, and then grows, this is trivial to put the, to prove the, the beta hat helan, PLS helan, we can say, converts to this one when n goes to infinity. Well, why? Because this is a plugin estimator, and you know that this is a consistent estimator of this, this is a consistent estimator of this, and therefore you put all together, and you can get, get this one. Okay? Moreover, you can put that the you can try uh, to write a synthetic distribution of this. That this was done in 2013, not before. I mean, it was done nine years ago. Because you have in the 73, you have the beta hat. Helen realized about beta. He could say that this is consistent, and he could make the asymptotic distribution, or not, because he didn't have a, what was the model. Maybe th this is why he couldn't do the asymptotic distribution, no? That we love the, the statistician to do that. But I mean, the consistency at the end, he could say beta hat converts it to beta helan. But what is beta helan was the problem, no? Okay. One of the things that I want to show very quickly is how you can write the Nepal's algorithm in the population version. Okay. And. Uh, Okay, I will go to the simple one because it's the one that I will use later. Here was um, something that you can do. I want you to send the, the notes and then they can do the computation. Let me go. You can try to see for tomorrow what is this, the Helen. Believe me, this is the population version of the one that they give you before. Meaning that the one that they give you in the sample version is a plugin estimator of these things. And this is, can be written as the same as I told you, but it's like to do the regression of y on the linear combination and then multiply by wq. And here, the only thing I did is to put a stop in, I will stop in the population if this happens. Okay? I will stop there. And now, that is the sample version is more complicated, 
you can believe me, but this is, is the, the way you do in the population, the new parts. And then I give you an example that I will do for you. What happens if I have this sigma x and this sigma, sigma xy, okay? And I want to compute the beta in that case. Okay, I will not put the beta here, but I will put you the basis. With the, with the, the stopping criterion, the beta for Nepal is going to be this one. You can write this if you are willing to do for tomorrow the x, the and the beta is this one. This is in the population, no, I don't have beta. I program this in order, I can say you program to, to do it because I was, I, I, it's only two steps, but uh, if I didn't do in the computation, in the computer, I was going, I was making a lot of mistakes. Okay, the population version, you have to believe me, is this one. The population version says, for simples, I will write this because I will use this one. He says, take the first V1, I will make B. The first V1 is going to be, it says, the first eigenvector of the covariance times the covariance. If Y is one dimension, this is, is P by 1, and therefore, the first one is going to be the covariance between X and Y. The second one, the, the, I, will to, I will tell about the, the stopping criteria. The second one, it says the first second vector of this product. Again, this is one dimension. Well, it should be all uh, uh, no capital. It's one dimension. It says V2 is Q. Let me, I would write, I want to write, what is this? V1 of the sigma x1. Okay. Since this is V1 and V1 was this covariance, I will put sigma x1. Let's try to review what is the, the projection. What is the Q, uh, do you use this notation for the orthogonal projection on this one? Okay, what is this? Identity minus what? You put the vector, okay? You put the vector transpose. Again, the vector. Invert, and then you put the vector transpose. Times sigma x1. This is the second one. Let me put here. The third one is telling me, the third one is telling, you take sigma x, y, but now you take away q of sigma x of the first two, b1, b2. Of course, again, this is the identity, minus sigma x, now my vector, this, okay, V1 transpose, V2 transpose, sigma x squared, V1, V2, inverse, and here V1 transpose, V2 transpose, sigma x, sigma x1. You will see that <laughs> immediately it become very, but you can put it in a computer and you get this. This is, is the simple version. But you stop, look at when you stop. You stop if this is, is zero. If this is not zero, you get beta three. Now you see if this is zero, the next one, of course. You start V1, V2, until the one that gives you zero. That I want to show here, that is never going to give you zero. The only thing is going to be, if you put one that you don't need, is because it's linear combination of the other one. This is why the algorithm is very bad. Because to be linear combination, the matrix, when you have the inverse, is becoming more and more singular. But here, you have to look, okay, this is zero. If this is zero, you stop, because you took away 
everything that x has in y, that if x has, that it needs about y in the regression. Okay? This is a very easy stopping criterion. It says, okay, but this is, again, in the population, in the sample, never. This is never happened. Okay. If you compute in this example, you get the following. I, I hope we have the simple one. You get 5, 0, 0, of course, in the first, the same one. And now you have something else. But the beta, again, is the same. And if you do in the, OK, you can do in the, in the Helen one and see what you get. That again, you get exactly, the beta is exactly the same, but the basis is not the same. The basis for Helen is 5, 0, 0 again. And this 56, uh, 200 over 3, and 0. And if you do the next one, the numbers are huge, and a linear combination of these two, OK? This is why it's more difficult to use two. OK. This is a, a nice homework if you can do uh, over there. If you can do this, it really you know a lot about matrices, not about linear regression. To do the transliteration, to see that all these algorithms in the sample are the plugin on the population. I did this and I spent like 100 pages for each of them, but I enjoy a lot doing these things that maybe not, not important. But why is this important not to do this? But why is important? It's important because what I told you, each of these algorithms goes to the population version of the algorithm, OK? Moreover, we can prove this in the population and in the sample, the span of the one that you get with the um, nipples and the one that you get with the uh, simples or the one that you get for Helen or Krilov, they are the same in the sample and the population. Now this is important to me. Even in the sample where you have noise, you get the same. Uh, of course, this is when y is one dimension, and of course, if the span are the same, why you get the same beta? Once you know that the span of all of them, consider this: the beta nipples is the b nipples, b nipples transpose in the population. B nipples, sigma is one. And now I tell you, B simple expand the same subspace as this one. That means that BS is BN times a, an invertible matrix, no? This is, is P by Q, P by Q, Q by Q, that has invert. Okay? And now when I, when I do beta, Simple is going, uh, sorry, yeah, beta simple is going to be BS, BS transpose sigma X, BS, BS sigma X, Y. But I said they expand the same, again, uh, the same space. The, the space is the same and A is invertible, and therefore I can put here <coughs> BN A, A transpose, BN transpose. Sigma x, Vn a, Vn, uh, sorry. And this is transpose. A transpose B, <laughs> transpose sigma x. Since it has an inverse, this is, I can put the, instead of this inverse, I can put the inverse of this, times the inverse of this, times this inverse. And we get what we want. This is A inverse. A minus T, A T, B N, sigma X, Y. The A cancel out, and we get the data that we want. The same we have, yeah. 
and the sample. Yes, because I thought, okay, in the population, they, they expand exactly the same, and therefore I can do the computation. But in the sample, they expand the same. In the sample, when y is one dimension, eh? When y is one dimension, Well, you can do, yeah. It, it is a, um, there are some problems. When y is, it has more than one dimension, you have to do PLS in reverse too, if y is very big. But it doesn't matter. The, what I'm saying is it's always true. This is the result that is interesting, that the, in the population are the same, and then I can talk about model. Once I have a model for one, I have a model for the, for the rest. But in the sample, they are the same. If you do the algorithm, any of the algorithm is going to give you the same answer. Well, of course, the rounding, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, but it's the same because the span is the same. When, when you do, because there is a correspondence about what you are doing here and what you are doing in the other. The only thing that change, this is a, I will show you immediately why it's the same. And the numerical analysts are going to give you the answer. I want to talk very quickly about, uh, can I talk 10 more minutes or no? No, no, I want to say about something to finish this. There is something called conjugate gradient. Do you know about this? Do you take a class in numerical, uh, numerical analysis? I will tell you very quickly because it's a very funny story. Numerical analysts, don't, they don't want to solve a problem uh, to do linear regression. They want to solve equations, okay, differential equation, but at the end they want to, um, to solve this equation, ax equal b. This is, is the general problem that they have. As we have linear regression, they do complicated things, but at the end they want to solve this problem, okay? But let's come back to our problem. Our problem was, you, I convinced you that when you have this one, the beta was sigma x inverse sigma xy, okay? I convinced you that it was this one. I pass. I, my beta, that is the one that I know, is this one. Or this one. I want to solve the equation, of course. I want to solve this equation. Find a beta such that this is, is equal or is the closest one or something like that. Numerical analysts have the same problem. They want to find the x that solve this equation. And then um, the question is, okay, my x is going to be beta, my a is going to be sigma x, and my b is going to be sigma x y. What can I do if I use their method, okay? It's a good question, at least you say, okay. And then I apply conjugate gradient. I'm not going to go through the algorithm, but this is an algorithm that is very well known between them. They do the following. Look at what we did simple and what the statisticians are doing. They get all the bases, and once they get the bases, they compute beta. Okay, they do something different, say, okay, I will, I will be lazy. I don't want to compute all of them and then compute the beta because this is very expensive. If you take another Q, you have to do again all the situation. And they do a step, I'm not going to show the step, but they do the following. They compute a direction, once they have the direction, they compute another direction, and then they improve the beta, they say. They compute another direction, another direction, and the last beta, they update the last beta. They are updating the betas every time. Therefore, if you want to stop, uh, stop after three steps, you have the beta. You don't have to make again the beta. And you want another step. You compute another direction, another direction, and then they, they compute two directions. In some way they do. The first direction is the B. The, B. the first direction for the other direction is B. It's the same B. And then they do one direction, they update like this. 
The last direction from, okay, the directions are two for them, D and R, okay? They start R in zero, the, uh, the index, and D in one. And it's the same than B. Therefore, they are, if I apply conjugate gradient, the first direction for R zero, for the, D one, is going to be sigma X, Y. Then they say, okay, they compute something. They update D using the other direction plus something about the, the direction. By, uh, they update the direction using, in some way, the direction that they compute before mixing with the direction, the other direction. And the same for this direction. They compute it's like the error. How much I need to go, how much is my error? And the beta, look at this, this is my beta, is the beta before and they update with the D. But they need the other direction because this is one of the direction and the other direction is the error. They go here and my direction is updating from that and they go here to update the beta. Why I'm telling you this? I apply conjugate gradient here. What happened? There are two directions, I told you. The direction that is computing a uh, conjugate gradient is, I told you, the D's and the R's, okay? One of the directions is this one, and the other direction is exactly this one. Okay, it's exactly the same. What they are doing, what the wall was doing, it was part of the conjugate gradient. The conjugate gradient was uh, from the 50, from, was from the same moment. But this connection is pretty new, that they, in fact they are solving. They are solving the same problem, but not solving the same problem. They are getting the two directions, and they are dating beta one by one. And therefore, this should be the algorithm that we should use in some way, because the numerical analysts are improving all the time this algorithm. They are very good on that, and they are getting the same answer. It can be proven that is exactly the same. Uh, the conclusion is this is, can be proven as a theorem that gives the two bases of the same, well, I call three lobes of space to the one from uh, Helam, but one of the bases is the Nepal's and the other basis is the simple. And this is the theorem that I was telling you, that uh, uh, the base, this is one of the bases for um, conjugate gradient, and this is the other one. They span the same for that the Nepal's, this span the, the simples. Um, each of them, I don't know how to say, it's each of them are the same, not only all together as before, because we say, these span the same of this and they are different, no. In the, in the case of the conjugate gradient, it's computing one by one the same direction. It's not only this part, but it's only this part. Of course, the beta is exactly the same. And it's, okay, this is again in the, I will tell you something. In general, a numerical analyst, they, when they apply to this, they don't have sample, okay? They have one, they have something like this. They have one matrix and they have one matrix. And the, uh, the, uh, the sample algorithm that I was talking about, Nepal, and simple work even if the covariance is not invertible. In the sample, it works this. Why? Because if Q is less than N, I can do the inverse. But the numerical analysts don't have any theory almost about what happened when, N, when the matrix sigma X that they are considering is not invertible. There are few papers like from the two or three years ago, where they start talking about no, uh, no invertible matrix. They didn't have that problem. But the algorithm works the same if you don't go too far away, no? You have to go Q less than N and uh, to finish this, what do we know so far? And tomorrow we continue to, I will give you the model, I promise. PLS and algorithm in the sample, but it's a plugin on the, in the population. PLS in the sample for p fix and n growing converts to the parameter in the population. I mean, they are consistent to something that we don't know, I mean, to a beta PLS. 
but uh, what we want to talk next class is what is the meaning of the population of the PLS coefficient, and this is what I'm going to talk tomorrow. That's it. <laughs> Do you have questions or? I think you, you are going to show, show us the, the sample you, you show an example of EPA that was not used. Yeah. You can show the, uh, the, the PLS? Yes. Well, the PLS, I have the problem I can give you for them. The PLS, this is the result. Is the covariance between X and Y? Is this one? Yes, is this one? Mm. But it's easy to program. I have, I mean, you can share like, the things that they have. My programs are terrible at my English, but you can you can see them from there to compute the things. I can give it to you, and you can give it to the people. It's not a problem. If you see mistake, you can tell me whatever. Any other question? Okay. Um.